Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese drama land in the past week. And let's get right into it. First, dramas that have gone live. On the 17th, we have a drama that officially aired on Aichi'i. 不完美, 受害人, imperfect victim led by Zhou Xun, Ling Yun, Liu Yijun, Dong Jie, Zhong Chuxi. It's 29 episodes. It's directed by Yang Yang, the female director who's done quite a few dramas in the past couple of years that are quite well received. Ever since the making of this project, I have been keeping an eye on it and really anticipating it. It kind of airdropped this week and I'm up to date to today's episode. It's a really good drama so far. I don't have anything significant I can even think of to complain about. Contemporary lawsuit drama about a rape case that looks like many actual real life cases all mixed together. So far, the performance, the writing, and the way it's made, very mature production, very proper production, and some really good stellar performances from the entirety of the cast, including Ling Yun, who I think up to the point of Dream of Splendor, she's got the bad actress kind of rep, being one of those young actresses who doesn't know what to do in front of a camera. This one, she's doing a really, really good job. So if you haven't checked out this drama, I would highly recommend you give it a try. Then on the 20th, Thursday, we have a fantasy period idol drama going live on Youku again. Youku is loaded with this type of dramas called Lang Jun Bu Ru Yi, the princess and the werewolf. The name already spoiled the entire drama for you. You don't need synopsis anymore. It's led by Chen Zhe Yuan and Wu Xuan Yi. If it's any good, I believe I'll definitely hear about it on the internet and then I'll make up my mind about whether I should jumping. Then we have two dramas. They are the two comeback team drama from two different platforms. On Tencent, on the 24th, we are going to see Chang Xiangsi Lost You Forever part one. The part two will happen later, towards the very end of the year. The Yangzi drama with three male leads, Lotus, Casebook on Aichi'i on 23rd. So pretty much same time. That's the Cheng Yi led drama with mainly, again, quite a few guys. Both dramas are so similar. A lot of guys period, with fighting, but one is more on wuxia type of thing, the other is more on fantasy. And then considering Mango probably is gonna check out Young Blood too, very soon as well, maybe early August, something like that, we will have a uh, situation where four major platforms are all doing period idol dramas. Can't wait to see in the bloody battle who's gonna come out as the winning gladiator. And then on the 27th on Tencent, they also have a drama that they're gonna push out. I mean, by all means, may also become a good contestant for summer slot most popular drama. That is the sister drama of The Rebel, The Infiltrator, led by Huang Xiaoming and Jiang Xing. This drama, if it's similar to Rebel, everything considered. It could be. Actually, this one become more popular than the fantasy drama. Who knows? So that is the current airing will air drama that we've heard this week. Moving on to the next section, let's talk about dramas at other stages. First, some dramas that have wrapped during this week. First one is a drama that's already decided will air in October, type of national day celebration drama. Very serious, proper drama I've talked about once, I believe, called Zhen Cha, Inxiong Scout Hero on Youku. Korean War setting, so 1950s setting drama of clearly Korean War. So you're gonna basically see Chinese army and American armies at each other. So my American <laughs> audiences, you're gonna see how uh, your armies gets represented by Chinese drama makers on Korean soil <laughs> back in 1950s. It's led by Luo Jing and Ma Sichun. So both of them are pretty good actors. When they're given the right type of roles, they can definitely pull it off. And judging by the trailer, it's definitely one of those serious, proper military themed dramas that we haven't seen that many in recent years, but used to be a big genre in Chinese drama land that gets a lot of production and some really high quality storytellings. It'll be uh, very interesting <laughs> for international audiences to watch. Then we also have the contemporary metropolis young couple story wrapping, Xiao Ritz, that still doesn't have 
an official English title yet, but I believe my audiences already have heard it multiple times. The one that's led by Tong Yao and Chen Xiao set in Shanghai. Pretty fast production, I believe only about two months ago or something that I talked about this starting shooting. Then we also have another drama wrapping during this week, which is Gong Jun's leading police drama, The Truth. That's a Tencent drama where he leads it as a policeman character with Sun Yi. I've seen enough leaked photos on the set of them shooting the drama where he is a policeman. So you're gonna see him in contemporary policeman <laughs> costume of China. Fastest end of this year, most likely next year. Also during this week, we have a Yoku drama that has started shooting called 2099. Just by hearing the name, you should know it's a sci-fi. <laughs> it's talking about future. It's led by Li Xirui and Wu Zeyuan. And the story is a bit weird. The synopsis is, it is actually a period sci-fi drama. You're gonna have a period setting king who is useless at ruling his kingdom, meeting a 2099 robot AI woman character. <laughs> it feels like a very Yoku script type of thing. So they've started shooting during this week. I feel like this type of drama, it has to be basically comedy. It just happens to happen in that weird setting and then I'll well, make it fun. So these are the specific drama news we've had this week. Not that much, but we are heading towards the big bloody summer slot battle for sure. While that is going on this entire week, my life was brightened by the drama outside of the drama regarding fireworks of my heart, I don't know what it's like internationally, but <laughs> on China's internet. It is the thing that has provided me single-handedly with the most amount of melons and fun that I've had this week. I made the first impression video around episode 10 or 12, something like that, when I watched the drama. Ever since then, the plot has gotten so weird, characters so weird, and then the producer the director, the original writer. Mango TV has, has done so many things outside of the drama that is every time they do it, it's like they're boomeranging themselves. So they throw out something trying to tame the audiences or force the audiences to watch it the way they want it. But it got so boomerang. So everything they tried, even by like cutting Wei Da Jun's screen time down, like cutting scenes of him off the drama, didn't work. It's just waves and waves of revenge from audiences to flush mango flush them <laughs> to leads social media account, then make videos to laugh at them, laugh at the plot, laugh at the gaslighting lines that this drama has of the male lead on the female lead, and then just so much fan-made content that flushed Weibo, Billy Billy everywhere. <laughs> it's epic. Every time new episodes come in, it just confirms and confirms again and again. The things that people laugh at about this drama and complain about it, and then literally is now making fun of it. Unfortunately, we live at these days where social media and internet just fuel the war and fight between everything. Everything is black and white. We have the two ends of everything. People are just like camping on different sides and try to you know, do whatever. Given that this is also summer and then this is also a astrologically like a very fiery kind of period of time. People just decided to go crazy. Everyone is like, we've had enough. So to hell with, you know, be nice. I've watched so many fan videos that are so funny and I definitely have become also a Ren. <laughs> just every day, just like going everywhere to see what more inventive and sarcastic comments we can find on internet about the epic fail of the efforts of this drama's producer, director, main leads trying to steer public's opinion one direction and every time they do something, it goes to the other direction and everybody have more reasons to laugh at them. This year, we've actually seen that happening to multiple dramas and multiple occasions where audiences have had enough. I think Chinese drama audiences particularly have had so much bad dramas in the last how many years that, that a lot of people are like, to hell with it. <laughs> like, it's just exploded at all. Even like fandom as strong as Yang Yang's, he has a very long established fandom. He was, even until today, you can still consider him to be the top, top traffic person. Even his fandom cannot keep control over the situation. No amount of data troops can actually control the Lu Ren passers by, people who are not in fandom, just want to make fun of your 
idol, so they they go at it. It wouldn't be easy for the fans, true fans of Yang Yang, to、uh, swallow it very well. And if you happen to be one of them, don't check out China's social media for a while. Okay, it's now. Something that I haven't seen before, and this is also the first time I've seen a drama that got this popular, this hot. Totally because the audiences do not like how the drama deals with the actors and how how they are trying to manipulate public's opinion. Random people just rises up and start to create their own constant flow of content to show who is actually having the upper hand. So this whole situation is the first time I've seen. Since I started this channel, and I am having so much fun over it. That will be the end of this weekly video from Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.